Did you know that every lawyer has a huge swinging hammer? This is not a metaphor. John Oliver covered the dispute between Jim the Texas Hammer Alder. I'm Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. And Mike the Alabama Hammer Slocum. I'm Mike Slocum, the Alabama Hammer. To recap, Jim Alder says he spent more than $100 million on ads branding himself as the Texas Hammer, a slogan he's been using since the 1990s. The Texas Hammer. He sued Mike Slocum, the Alabama Hammer, for copying his commercials line by line. I'm Mike Slocum, the Alabama Hammer. Slocum also calls himself the DC Hammer for his DC area commercials. Both advertisements feature the lawyers battling an 18-wheeler, holding sledgehammers, and speaking right into the camera, promising to beat insurance companies at their own game. That's what I, I thought. thought. Slocum says he stopped running that ad and also claims that he only calls himself the Alabama and DC Hammers and doesn't mess with Texas. I'm Mike Slocum, the Alabama Hammer. Slocum did appear to copy that 18-wheeler commercial, but also has other weapons or tricks up his lawyer's sleeve, or suit sleeves, I guess. Here's Slocum threatening to shoot insurance companies. Yeah, well, here's a target we can all agree on. So what is this dispute really about? Well, Alder owns the federal trademark registrations for the trademarks, the Texas Hammer, its Spanish translation, El Martillo Tejano, and The Hammer. Sorry, Jim Adler, El Martillo Tejano. So what does this mean? Well, a trademark is a word, symbol, or phrase used to identify a particular manufacturer or seller's products and distinguish them from the products of another or services of another. Nike and Adidas have different logos. That's how you can distinguish uh, which brands of shoes you were buying and where they came from. Trademarks are generally considered a form of intellectual property like copyrights and patents. However, these are all different concepts. A patent is a legal right to an invention, which is a product or a process that provides a new way of doing something or solving a problem. It usually has some sort of utility value. A patent entitles the patent holder, who is often the inventor, to the exclusive right to replicate, use, or license, or sell that thing. Copyright, uh, on the other hand, protects original works of creative authorship fixed in a tangible medium. Copyright attaches to things like songs, books, articles, movies, and art. That means that authors have the exclusive rights to do whatever they want to the things that they make, the, the expression that they make, including the right to sell or otherwise profit from them. But copyrights and trademarks are very different. Uh, trademarks don't reward the trademark holder by giving them the right to sell something. The person or business which holds a trademark has the right to stop others from using a similar or identical trademark without their permission. The purpose of a trademark is to prevent consumer confusion about the source of the goods and services. Trademarks prohibit any marks that have a likelihood of confusion with an existing one. That means that a business cannot use a symbol or brand name if it looks or sounds similar or has a similar meaning to the one that's already on the books, if it's already being used in commerce, especially if the products or services are related. So that's a crash course in the difference between copyrights, trademarks, and patents. And believe me, it's way, way more complicated than that. But this is the source of the dispute between Alder and Slocum. Alder says that Slocum calls himself the Texas Hammer in the Texas area, which creates consumer confusion since Alder has the trademark to the phrase Texas Hammer. And to prove that someone infringed on your trademark, you have to show that it's likely to cause consumer confusion about the source of the products or services. Alder says Google searches for Texas Hammer pull up a phone number that automatically connects the searcher to Slocum's call center. This is known as click-to-call technology. Click-to-call ads are a new addition to the search engine advertising, and these ads don't necessarily link to a website, but instead trigger the user's device to call a predetermined phone number. Alder says that by purchasing these keywords, Slocum is trading on the goodwill that Alder accumulated in the Texas market with his hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising related to the Texas hammer mark. And while Slocum's nearly identical commercial seems like a pretty clear cut case of copying, the issue there would be potentially uh, copyright infringement because copyright applies to the expression of the commercial, the scenes that are used, the uh, lines of dialogue in that particular commercial. Whereas trademark would be the issue when it comes to the actual marks themselves the use of hammer in advertising, whether it's the Texas hammer, the Alabama hammer, or any other kinds of hammers that come up in that particular commercial. And it gets even more complicated when you're talking about click-to-call advertising and advertising on search engines and online where a competitor buys the right to advertise using a competitor's mark in a keyword. So for example, if you say, anytime someone searches for the Texas hammer, I want you to show my ads for 
the Alabama hammer. Uh, it's a complicated issue that I won't go too far into in this video, but there is an additional wrinkle to this case that makes it much more fun. Because when Alder applied for his original hammer trademarks, he told the USPTO, the US Patent and Trademark Office, that he wouldn't be confused with lawyers in other jurisdictions, such as the Kentucky hammer. That's because he needed to establish the geographic scope of his trademark protection. Just because you have a trademark in one area doesn't mean you can exclude everyone else from using that mark in the entire country. Now, John Oliver does a great job of covering the controversy between Slocum and Alder, which is hilarious in its own right. But what Oliver misses out on is that this is just the tip of the hammer iceberg. There are far, far more hammer lawyers in the United States. It's kind of its own thing. So <laughs> let's talk about the Kentucky hammer. I'm attorney Daryl Isaacs, the hammer. That is Daryl Isaacs, a Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana lawyer who bills himself as the hammer. Like Slocum and Alder, Isaacs is also an auto accident personal injury lawyer who likes to fight with 18 wheelers. So if you search for the hammer lawyer, Google may display an ad for the hammer law firm, which is actually Isaacs, neither Alder or Slocum. So if Alder spent $100 million on advertisements, uh, you can imagine how much money the Kentucky hammer has spent on his own Super Bowl commercials. One of those ads shows Isaac in a spaceship reenacting Star Wars, which raises all kinds of other intellectual property issues. But it's pretty funny because when Princess Leia's spaceship gets T-boned, she knows just who to call. Help me, Daryl Isaacs, you're my only hope. On my way. You know, for lawyers, they are skirting awfully close to very established intellectual property. Isaacs also wrote a dragon for his next Super Bowl advertisement, which was based on Game of Thrones. In fairness though, that is better CGI than you can find on the CW, and that advertisement is better than the last episode of Game of Thrones. Now, in addition to calling himself the hammer in the Louisville and Indianapolis markets, Isaacs markets himself as the heavy hitter. But things get even more complicated because would you imagine that there might be more than three hammering lawyers in the USA? Well, of course there are, because uh, Georgia has Jamie Casino, a man so committed to his hammer persona, he ran several commercials during the Super Bowl in his local market of Savannah. The 2014 version is a two minute long commercial and features Jamie wearing black leather, getting personal with the hammer while a Metallica cover band plays in the background. I mean, just look at that fire. And here's Jamie with a cross around his neck, absolutely messing up some TVs in the 2018 Super Bowl ad. Is he taking on insurance companies or preparing to stake some vampires? Who can say? But we're not done yet. Insurance companies are also the target of the Illinois hammer, Bradley Dworkin. My name is Bradley Dworkin, the Illinois hammer. Now, my favorite part of the Illinois hammer ad is its depiction of the insurance company lawyer as this fat slob with a messy desk and slovenly clothing. Uh, if you've ever had to interact with insurance company lawyers, uh, you'll get a kick out of that. Um, it's not exactly inaccurate. Uh, <laughs> can you tell that I've had to sue a number of insurance companies before? Yeah, come at me, insurance company lawyers. Now, the Illinois Hammer's most recent commercial is animated and contains a truly memorable jingle. Dial 777, all service today. The Illinois Hammer is on the way. Honestly, I, I don't hate it. But could there be yet more hammers? Well, of course there are. We're not nearly done yet because lawyers are not that creative and the hammer just sounds cool. So Lowell, the hammer Stanley is a Virginia personal injury lawyer whose mantra is, I am the hammer, they are the nails. <laughs> now there is nothing subtle about this particular hammer's messaging. His basic message is size matters. And it says so right on the screen. Lowell, the hammer Stanley, 459 cash. Frankly, the New Mexico Hammers commercial is tame by comparison. New Mexico Hammer attorney Brett Parnell, I guess he just didn't feel like investing in CGI zombies, but you get the point across. You need a lawyer with a big hammer. And honestly, there are hundreds of other hammers out there because there are a lot of lawyers who have Hammer as their last name. So what about lawyers with the surname Hammer like St. Louis-based attorney Mark Hammer? Well, Hammer is his actual surname, so he can't be enjoined from using uh, all the Hammer puns he wants, but Mark Hammer's website does doesn't use any of them. This could be because Mark Hammer isn't down to ride the dragon, or perhaps it's because Missouri's ethical limitations on attorney advertisements are generally more restrictive than the ABA's recommended rules. Of course, men aren't the only ones with big hammers. Amberly Hammer brings it down on doctors who commit medical malpractice. 
So how can it be that there are so many hammer lawyers in the United States? Well, under US trademark law, there's no inherent problem with several different lawyers using the term the hammer in descriptive geographical terms. A trademark is all about preventing consumer confusion. So if you are providing goods and services to the entire United States, then your trademark would probably cover the entire United States. But lawyers are a classic type of service provider that are limited to certain geographical locations. Passing the bar in one state generally doesn't allow you to practice in another state. So often lawyers are limited geographically by the states where they are licensed to practice. And when a person applies for a trademark with the US Patent and Trademark Office, they obtain the rights to the trademark either by being the first person to use the mark in commerce or being the first to register the mark. And that's what Alder was claiming when he registered the phrase, the Texas hammer. He claims that he beat others, including Slocum, to the punch by using the mark first in a given geographical area. Using the mark in commerce usually means that you have sold a product or a service to the public with that mark attached to it. If you were the first to do this, you'll have priority to use that mark in the geographic area where the sales took place, as well as other geographic areas where your business would be expected to expand or where the reputation of your mark is established. So that's why Alder's filings say that his mark won't infringe on what Isaacs is doing in Kentucky. Alder has no intention of running commercials branding himself as the Kentucky Hammer. Call the hammer today. But at the same time, it's hard to talk about uh, attorney advertisements without talking about the regulation of those advertisements. Because depending on what state you're in, lawyers aren't allowed to say whatever they want to advertise and solicit clients. And Jim the Hammer Shapiro is probably the most infamous hammer of all. Because his antics were so notorious that New York actually created new rules to stop him from making obnoxious commercials. I cannot rip out the hearts of those who hurt you. I cannot hand you their severed heads. But I can hunt them down and settle the score. Shapiro's aggressive commercials ran in the Rochester, New York and South Florida areas, in addition to popping up in Winnipeg, Canada. Now, New York eventually suspended his license for running misleading commercials and sending a solicitation letter to a comatose patient. We conclude that any reasonable attorney would know that a solicitation letter sent to a hospitalized comatose patient in the days immediately following a collision between her automobile and a train would reach the patient and her family at a time when they were unable to exercise reasonable judgment in retaining an attorney. Respondent who had had actual knowledge of the condition of the accident victim will not be heard to argue that the disciplinary rule required him to be a quote, mind and body reader in order to determine whether his solicitation letter could be sent. Lawyers get a reputation for ambulance chasing, but actually most states actually have explicit rules that say you cannot do ambulance chasing. And so it's not surprising that Shapiro got in trouble. In 2007, the New York state court system adopted new disciplinary rules that were inspired by the Shapiro commercials. The rules prohibit nicknames such as the hammer. Of course, these rules would have stopped Alder, Slocum, Isaacs, and Stanley from having a lot of fun with their commercials. So if you've ever wondered why lawyers are no fun at cocktail parties, it's just because we're ethically unable to have any fun whatsoever. But if you wanna be the hit of your own dinner party, I'd recommend today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a great way to eat delicious, fresh food while still being healthy. In fact, HelloFresh has a variety of calorie smart and carb smart recipes, as well as pescatarian and veggie options. Now, I'm a do-it-yourself person, and I have to say, I was initially pretty skeptical about HelloFresh. I'm a pretty good cook, so I didn't think that I needed the help, but I have actually loved it. Even for an experienced cook, HelloFresh delivers new ingredients and recipes that I would never try on my own. HelloFresh generally keeps everyone's favorite meals and then rotates new ones in all the time. Most recently, I've enjoyed my firecracker meatballs, brown sugar bourbon pork chops, and crispy Parmesan chicken. And I don't know about you, but I never would have attempted any of those recipes on my own. In fact, I usually increase the size of my HelloFresh serving so I can enjoy the leftovers for lunch and snacks. And HelloFresh isn't just about meals. HelloFresh's marketplace features a variety of add-ons like breakfast, desserts, seasonal snacks, again, it's huge time savings. And of course, everything was delivered straight to my door, so I didn't even have to do any shopping. The produce actually gets to you faster than a grocery store, so it arrives at peak freshness and flavor. And it's also super easy to save time. HelloFresh cuts out meal planning and prep, so the recipes only take 20 to 30 minutes to cook, literally less time to cook than it would normally take to do the shopping itself. And it's incredibly sustainable. Since the ingredients are pre-portioned, there's less prep and less wasted food. The packaging is almost entirely made from recyclable or already recycled 
content, and HelloFresh's carbon footprint is actually 25% lower than that of meals made from store-bought groceries. So if you would like to try HelloFresh, and I recommend that you at least try it, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LegalEagle16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Yes, you can actually get 16 free meals that include free shipping, or you can just click on the link that's on screen right now. So again, for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code LegalEagle16, or just click on the link below or the one that's on screen right now. Plus, clicking on this link really helps out the channel. And while you're at it, click on this playlist over here with all of my other legal videos. So click on this link or I'll see you in court.